Hello, today is all about finding where you're going to invest. And this is probably not the easiest thing to find, but I'm going to lay out a couple of steps that you can take to make it a lot easier. As a single professional, I had debt and no savings after my divorce. I always wonder how I can start investing in real estate to secure my future. I studied programs that gave me all the benefits of investing in real estate. Some claim I could start with no money, but I could not find one that gave me the practical, actionable steps I needed. As a wealth advisor, I've met people that own real estate but weren't ahead financially. They were rich, but they weren't wealthy. Then I finally realized that there was one vital component missing that makes someone become wealthy or not. And on this show, I will reveal what I found and give you the step-by-step -step actions to start investing in real estate and increase your wealth. My name is Araceli. Let's get started. If you're a new investor, this is for you. Because I think that one of the biggest uh, decisions that a real estate investor needs to do is to select the location in where you're going to be investing. And that is super important because the location cannot be changed. You can change the house, you can change the color, you can even tear, tear it down and uh, rebuild a new one. But the location, you're never going to be able to change it. And that's why it's important that you do a lot of due diligence before you decide where you're going to invest. So we're going to go deep into this and give you a couple of things that you can take into consideration when you're selecting the location. So let's get into it. I have a presentation today, so uh, there we go. So how to select a location? If you are just starting in real estate investing and you've seen maybe that your area, a lot of people are buying properties and maybe fixing and flipping, or there's a lot of rentals and you have decided that you want to do the same thing. Well, the first thing that I want to lay out here is that sometimes the town that you live in, is not necessarily the town that you need to invest in. And the reason is because sometimes the prices are too high or it's difficult to get in the market. So there's many reasons why uh, you need to look at what location it is. So the first thing that I recommend is that you look at the area that you live in. And that will give you kind of a baseline of how to move forward with any other locations if that's what you choose to do. But first understand the market that you're in. You know, uh, it, it's a city, uh, it is the countryside. What are the needs? Do you have universities close by? Uh, what are the jobs situation in the area? Is the city growing or people are leaving? Is there a shortage of jobs. There's many, many things to look at. And in fact, I do have another video that I want you to watch. It's actually coming out next week. And it gives you exactly 13 steps to follow that you can just do a quick checklist and you will know exactly like, yes, 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 yes. And then you can make a decision if you're evaluating a couple of different areas and I will give you more details at the end of the video. But for now, the first thing is just look at a baseline. How difficult it is to get into your own market uh, and then you can make some other decisions. So if your market is too high, then now you may want to look at have it, you know, out of town. So if you cannot do it locally, maybe out of town will work better for you. But the first thing is analyze a few properties within your own neighborhood or your own city, because cities could be really large. And sometimes from one end of the city to another, 
you may have a different analysis and the properties might be even different prices. I have seen it many times. Two, three blocks away, the properties are completely different price, like sometimes even close to half the price. And so you need to look and evaluate the city where you are in and what is the variation. Maybe the different type of neighborhoods will give you a different price range. But if you have done a few uh, analysis of different properties within your own city, you may come up with that. That might be the way to go. That be the place that you can invest and that is within your range. So now you can start moving forward. But if it is not the case, like it is in mine, for example, I am in Toronto, Canada, and the prices here are really, really high. And so it is very high, it's very difficult to get it into the market, especially if you're going to be buying a investment property. You need at least 20%. And if imagine if the property is already high, putting 20% is difficult. And sometimes the rents, if you're going to be renting that property, it doesn't really cover everything. So most likely you will have a cash flow negative. So that is what you need to do first to see if whatever strategy you're choosing, whether it's fix or flips or rentals, that is going to be conducive to do that kind of transaction. Um, so after you've done a few uh, property analysis and decided that that's not the area, then now you're gonna say, okay, so if I'm gonna have to do it out of town, where am I going to look for? So if the, you might look at locations where it makes more sense to invest um, and always remember to consider the time commitment when deciding where to invest. Also decide how far are you willing to go? As some things can be done online uh, with physical properties, is best if you are able to make a few trips, even once a month or maybe more often when you are in the process of doing the fix or flip or just getting a new tenant in if you need to do repairs. So that is the first step that I really recommend you do. Now, when it time and comes down to the location, you already know that. So location, location, location. That is the mantra that we use in real estate because that is the most important part and is where you're going to buy that makes sense for you. So I see many beginner real estate investors that want to invest in their own city, but sometimes depending on where you are at, it might not be the ideal place you can start investing, just like we discussed. So by now, you know, if you want to become an, an active investor, which if that means that you're going to get a physical property. And, uh, and if you are, this is going to be the most important thing to determine. That is the location before you do anything else. Um, after you have your best baseline, which is going to be from your home city, you now have a baseline from your city. Another thing that you want to consider is if you are just staying in that city for a short period of time. And that means that maybe you are considering to move to another city because of work commitments, or maybe you are going to be studying something, uh, or maybe you are getting married and the person that you're with is in a different place. This will be actually a really great opportunity for you to evaluate the other city that you're going to be moving to. If you know that it's going to be within a short period of time, and I'm, I mean, like maybe one or two years. So that would be a really good way to see that maybe the location that you're in right now is really good for investing. So you can start creating that team and looking 
the locations that you want to start investing before you move or could be the opposite that the place that you're going to go live is very very good for investing but the place that you're in is not so that is another thing that you want to consider another thing to consider when you are doing analysis if you are just a new real estate investor is to always measure a, fa a single family home usually three bedrooms two bathroom would be your baseline in the city so you can compare the same type of property to other locations so you know what the difference is now it depends where you are as well like in some cases the the baseline would be condos i don't know so you need to see what is in your area that sells the most for the majority of the population and that is the baseline that you want to take into consideration when looking at other areas if you want to stay in your market even though it's expensive then you can wait a little bit to accumulate more money or maybe you can find two or three people that want to participate in the project and split the profits if you want to explore other markets outside where you are, then the best thing to do is to determine, first of all, how far are you willing to go? And that will depend on your time commitments. Right now, if you're working full time, maybe you have the weekend off and you may want to use the weekends to do your real estate investing and get going with the property. But that is all dependent on you. Because at the beginning, especially when you are just starting a new fix and flip, you're going to need a little bit more time. So it's something that you want to have um, available and that it is easy for you to do. Of course, if you're willing to do it. My investment properties, I have one is about an hour from me. The other is about four and a half hours or close to five hours. Um, I'm okay with the distance but you may not. So let's say, for example, that you decide that one hour would be kind of like the maximum that you can go to. So if you see, I put this chart here on the screen so you can see that it's just like a bullseye. And if you can imagine being, you being right there in the center and you can draw in the map about an hour or two hours or three hours, whatever you have decided it's going to be the ideal time for you to get there and back and then draw a circle in the map to see exactly how many cities are within that uh, driving range and then start looking at the location so you can start you can go to this website i find it very useful because it has a lot of data uh, www.city-data.com and you can find some interesting facts about the city or the, that specific town that you're looking at and you can start making some decisions and then after that you can take you can actually watch my next uh, video because it talks about the 13 things that you need to take into consideration to kind of rate a city or a location for you to know if it is where you want to invest. Go. So now you have a little bit of information about how to get started in selecting a location. Nothing is in black and white and you need to look at your specific needs. And if you do have any questions, please let me know. Please comment below if there's anything else that you're taking into consideration besides of what I talked to you today. And uh, remember to watch the video in which it gives you the 13 steps to select a property. It'll be next week, okay? So I hope you enjoy and have a nice weekend. Thank you for being here on the show. Please remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell to get notified when there are more shows available. And if you would like to have more information on how to start investing in real estate, please visit my website at www.arisalihernandez.com. Thank you.